Hi, I'm Nancy Lee, an associate professor from National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology. I am here today to talk to you about Taiwan's AI resilience. So I'm assuming you are talking about the Skynet from the uh, movie The Terminator. So Skynet is something uh, we would call the AGI or ASI, which is much smarter than any kind of AI uh, nowadays and might have self-awareness. AI can now be briefly divided into two categories. One is narrow AI, operate only depends on human instructions, only um, operate in certain area or certain fields like ChatGPT, for example. So on the other hand, we have AGI or ASI that is we call a full AI. This kind of AI can do any kinds of things. The elements assistance called Java's, it can be an example of full AI. Smarter than people can think things like people can have people's logic, human's logic. So this kind of AGI hasn't been developed yet. Open AI has um, established a very comprehensive um, guideline to guide the responsible development of AGI. Maybe one day AI can have their own self-awareness. So I think it's possible, but not, not today. Well, not everyone, but some jobs for sure, especially those um, that are super repetitive or um, don't need much thinking. But it's actually a natural phenomenon, kind of like the Industrial Revolution. But if you are really worried about um, being replaced by AI, I'd suggest you to um, enhance your soft skills, adaptability, and maybe like critical thinking ability. So the information war um, between Taiwan and China is not news. And the development of technology that is the emergence of generative AI might make this information and this kind of uh, intended manipulation more e efficient. The election of Trump in 2016, yeah, that is the typical example of information war between US and Russia. So in Taiwan, we are not just building technology infrastructure, we are also uh, working on public policy and public awareness. For example, the government and civic groups like GovZero um, are teaming up to create like uh, open source tools for um, fact checking and in education we are emphasize ability of media literacy. The fake news and disinformation is really hard to um, detect. Parameters or like the patterns of this information evolve so quickly so uh, it is very hard to keep up. People need to raise their um, media literacy ability as well. They need to learn how to like be challenge you to a message they receive. If you like the show, please subscribe and leave your comments below. Still academia, it won't die, but on the contrary, with the help of this kind of AI, any kind of work, work including research, including academia, has entered a new era. So it's like standing on the shoulders of a giant. But it actually definitely changed the way how we educate and changed the priority of education. Because in the past, teachers were more like dictionaries. They provide knowledge to their students. But nowadays, um, knowledge is so easy to acquire. So nowadays, I think professors or teachers and the rule of professors are more like, uh, like a mentor. So we responsible for guiding students on their learning path, triggering their interest in learning and we also uh, want to help them not to fully rely on AI. If I really need to have a final exam to my students, I normally will have like two or three essay questions. Which topic of these courses interests you the most? How can you use this kind of tool in your personal life? Can you give me example? Because ChatGPT cannot know your self-experience when you do this kind of homework. Yeah. Quit 
one. Generative AI is revolutionizing the way we think about creativity, productivity, and innovation. By leveraging vast datasets and cutting-edge machine learning algorithms, it can generate text, images, music, and even code with astonishing fluency. As we move forward into an increasingly AI-powered future, it is essential to embrace the opportunities while addressing the ethical considerations. Generative AI isn't just a tool, it's the next frontier of human imagination and digital transformation. This paragraph is seems very logical, but if you read it in detail, it's kind of like shallow and no unique point of view. I guess it's probably like written by AI. And there's also a dash there. Yeah, I think this is probably also written by ChatGPT as well. Yes, I asked ChatGPT to write a most ChatGPT uh, <laughs> rhetorical writing. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, this looks like ChatGPT's words. Quiz 2. I propose to consider the question, can machines think? This should begin with definitions of the meaning of the terms machine and think. The definitions might be framed so as to reflect so far as possible the normal use of the words, but this attitude is dangerous. Instead of attempting such a definition, I shall replace the question by another, which is closely related to it and is expressed in relatively unambiguous words. Um, I think this is quite deep, this paragraph. If it's written by an AI, it must be an AI that um, developed for academic use because this is so academic and my professor back in NPU just loves to use the word um, ambiguity. This is either written by a researcher or an AI, a very high performance AI um, developed for academic use. Okay, it's actually Aaron Turing uh, in the article, Imitation Game. That's why this is so like deep and academic. Okay, quiz 3. Artificial intelligence has long fascinated sci-fi and fantasy writers. Arthur C. Clarke, William Gibson, Ian M. Banks, they've all minded in their fiction, but now such futuristic visions are fast becoming fact. From his new post as Google's Director of Engineering, AI developer Ray Kurzweil has predicted that by 2029, computers will be able to outsmart even the cleverest human. Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk, the founder of PayPal and Tesla, clearly think he's onto something. Hmm. I think... The sentences are quite fancy, fancier than AI-generated content, but there's also a dash, so it's very hard to tell. I'll say it's human if I had to choose one. It's human. Okay, it's a BBC essay uh, or article of journalism in uh, 2015, so yeah, it's, it's human writing. Okay, yeah. The differences between AI-generated content and human-written content is that AI-generated content um, usually very logical, of course, but lack a specific point of view, lack a unique point of view. So do not use ChatGPT to write your homework. Okay, DeepSeek is actually a generative AI developed by uh, China. It's a country-level AI, country-level generative AI. DeepSeek is no doubt a high-performance AI, but um, when it comes to censorship, it's not surprising that China has built their own generative AI, considering they've already built platforms like uh, Weibo and WeChat to replace other social media networks, mainly for public opinion control. DeepSeek is more like active control, or maybe you can say like aggressive control. It doesn't just filter content, it creates content and you interact with it. So actually, there are many uh, countries I've been deep seek, including Taiwan, South Korea, Italy, the US, and some other uh, countries in the EU. For governments and institutions, uh, especially in democratic countries like um, the US and Taiwan, and this is not just a technology race, but it's about protecting sensitive data and maintaining control of our own digital ecosystem. So that's why developing a trustworthy sovereign AI is so important for Taiwan and any other uh, countries um, that wants to preserve their own um, value. So it's a matter of national resilience. Taiwan has launched a government-led LLM called TIDE. It brings together universities, research institutions, and startups to develop a localized language model based on traditional Chinese. So this kind of uh, LLM reflects Taiwan's democratic values and cultural identity and to offer a different choice from China's simplified Mandarin AI. It's not about like to do a better AI, 
then ChatGPT is about to have our own control of our own like infrastructure and data and user behavior and user information, something like that. But I think the main challenge is still user behavior because people just tend to use generative AI built by big countries or something like that. So apart from technical abilities, I think branding or marketing is also very important as well. I think Taiwan's greatest strength in AI is no doubt the manufacturing and the very solid um, ecosystem of uh, chips and semiconductors. NVIDIA, if they want to build a, a supercomputer, it needs a lot of hardware, and Taiwan is the expert of producing these kind of elements. The announcement that Jason Huang made to set up NVIDIA HQ in Taipei and also a research center in Kaohsiung gives us the opportunity to shift um, our role from manufacturing to a strategic hub in the uh, global AI value chain. Many international organizations, including the UN, uh, do not officially recognize Taiwan as a country, so therefore do not uh, collect or include data in their like, digital uh, governance reports. And that's why Taiwan is often left out uh, of global assessments. But still, uh, Taiwan plays an important role in the global AI ecosystem, especially in uh, hardware. So we produce over 90% of the world's advanced AI chips for companies like NVIDIA, Apple and Google provide more than 80% of the world's AI servers because the AI ecosystem actually has a lot of participates and a lot of um, procedures. So I think maybe in the future, like in three or five years, apart from the manufacturing part, semiconductor part, um, I think people have the confidence to develop like the software development and a lot of like AI talent um, education and also changes the way that like international organizations see Taiwan as well. So I think um, there are two main reasons for this gap. The first one is the Taiwan's industrial development history. So for decades, um, Taiwan has specialized in hardware manufacturing and OEM, and our economy has basically relied on this kind of uh, industries. So more and more resources were put in this area that a very solid uh, foundation to produce AI infrastructure. But this also leads to the second reason why this gap exists. That is the way of education. For so long, Taiwan has uh, eager to cultivate uh, talents in the area of hardware manufacturing and engineering. But engineering emphasizes like single best solutions and standardized answers. But however, when it comes to like developing software or um, any kind of applications, um, it requires more open-minded um, and agile thinking abilities. The term Smart AI Island shows the region of Taiwan being a hub for um, AI ecosystem value chain. Since NVIDIA are sitting there like headquarters and research centers in Taiwan, for the academia and for the industry, they are also like eager to create a lot of programs to cultivate like AI talent, not just for uh, programmers, not just for hardware engineers, but also like software developers, and also uh, a lot of talent with high creativity or a lot of soft skills. I think with the uh, very solid uh, semiconductor manufacturing and also a very proper policies, I think it is very promising to be a smart AI island. If I have to use one word to describe the future of AI in Taiwan, it will be fusion. Because I think um, for Taiwan, it's not about building a very powerful um, AI. It's about blending lots of elements, technology ability, democratic values, and global collaboration. If you like the show, please subscribe and leave your comments below.